Okay, welcome back. We're on page 220, and we're talking about anti-aliased fonts. And I'm not going to go into the science. Uh, the example of the book's pretty cool. The bottom line is, when you zoom in a lot, it looks fuzzy. So anti-alias takes the fuzz out. Okay, leave it at that. Um, so let's talk about other multimedia, you know, video and audio inside your web page. First of all, use it only when it's necessary. I mean, don't throw in a video or an audio or something unless it's somehow relevant to what it is you're trying to do. I mean, for example, don't you hate going to those websites and it automatically starts a video? I mean, you're there to, I don't know, download some driver for your printer. And so you drill down to this spot and an auto starting video pops up and I'm going, I don't want to watch your stupid video advertisement. I'm here to get something. Leave me the hell alone. Well, that's what we're talking about. Think like you do when you go to other people's websites. Okay. So only when needed and further make sure you have that alternate text, you know, either a transcript or a closed caption or something. So people who have visual impairments are going to be able to figure out what the heck you're talking about. On page 221, they talk about just more considerations. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of things to think about in no real particular order. Uh, one is what they call load time. So again, scientists have figured out that uh, most people get annoyed if they have to wait a more, any more than just a few seconds for your web page to load. Uh, 10 seconds is is the absolute max. I mean, if it takes more than 10 seconds for you to load a page, well, most people will get, uh, you know, frustrated and move on. Now, I'll tell you what, my frustration level is a heck of a lot more, less, more. Yeah, more than that, I probably would abandon after five or six seconds. But, you know, they're saying 10 seconds is the limit. But, um, okay, how do you know what how what they're the speed that they're at? I mean, maybe they're on a dial-up modem. Well, hmm, that'd be a little hard to figure out. So somebody's done the math for you. If you're if you're on a 56k baud modem, then a, a 90. So if if 10 seconds is the magic number, about 60k uh, is about the the limit you could get. So. If your web page is any more than about 60 kilobytes total, you know, including all the graphics, then uh, you're probably kind of overdoing it. You probably ought to break that into multiple pages. You know, have half of a page and then have a continue to get to bring up the next page. Something to break it up into small chunks. I mean, even if it's the same topic, clearly have it fill one half and then say, click here for page two and then brings up the next page. Don't have it so incredibly long that they can't read it or can't can't get it down in a reasonable period of time. So once again, um, don't just test this on your machine because you're going to be going, hey, this loads just fine. And then you send it out to the world and people complain, well, I can't get this thing to work. Well, because you didn't. There's even a load simulator you can use inside here that actually will cut the apparent speed down It'll say, pretend like I'm on a dial-up, and then it'll launch the page for you. So you actually can see what it is it looks like. Okay. There's a term in the print media called above the fold. And in newspaper and magazines, but mostly newspaper, what we're talking about is, if something is important, it ought to be on the front page of the paper. If I have to pick up a paper and turn it over or open it up, then things that are above the fold are the things I'm trying to get you. That concept just kind of makes sense. Any writing, it doesn't matter if you're writing for the web or you're writing term papers or whatever it is you're doing for a living. The most important things ought to be up front. Things that you want to grab their attention. Don't bury the lead. Don't make them go through page after page after page to find whatever it is they're after. I mean, for example, if I'm downloading a new graphics uh, driver from my NVIDIA card, don't make me go through tons and tons and tons of stuff when you know darn well the only reason I'm coming to your website is to download a driver. I've already bought the dang graphics card, so there's no need advertising to me, right? I've already bought your product. Leave me the heck alone. Just tell me what I want to know and leave me alone. That's what we're talking about. So, above the fold. Um, 
if you consider the average size of a screen, which is a little complex, assuming, for example, 1024 by 768, that's eh, a reasonable assumption. That only gives about 600 pixels up and down. So back to my example here. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, if, if you want to tell them something, it ought to be up here. It ought to be up here. So what I want to tell them is what are the features of this application? So there it is, up front, above the fold. I don't have to scroll to find out what it is. Up front, I'm telling what the features of this application is. Cool. All right. White space. Uh, don't cram everything together. Now, this is a very, in fact, this is a very easy way to spot an amateur. It's because amateurs think, partic particularly in the print media days. Okay, just hang on a second. So in print media, I'm paying for a four by six ad, okay? And it's very expensive, that four by six ad. And so I wanna have my ad consume 100% of that four by six. So they would pick small fonts and just fill it full of text with no white space. I mean, cram as much as you can in there because by God, I'm paying for four by six. I'm gonna get every single ounce of that four by six out. That's a very bad idea. You need a lot of white space. You need to separate things out, okay? Uh, horizontal scrolling. Uh, hopefully, you would never have a horizontal scroll. Vertical scrolling is practically inevitable, so we're not saying anything about that. But horizontal scrolling, you really, when you pop up a graphic, you you really shouldn't have to, you know, scroll side to side to be able to see the whole thing. If that's the case, then maybe you've got the wrong pictures. Um, again, 1024 by 768, um, about 960 pixels is about what you have from that little margin, right? That little edge right there to that little edge right there. I mean, think about this. This is going to sound crazy. I got a 1024 screen here, but I've got, you know, 16 pixels over here and I've got 16 pixels over here. Plus I've got a scroll bar. So I want to know what's the, the amount of text I can cram starting right there not over here on the edge right there okay so about 960. so you might say which is a good segue into the next topic well you might say well wait a minute how the heck do i know uh what it is the uh the the browsers really do well okay um there are people out there there's one called net market share that do this for a living they actually go out and figure out what browsers are currently being used so I, I can look at this and say you know 19 percent of the people are using uh, an old version of chrome and this and internet explorer and firefox and blah, 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 blah. it basically shows you what your co potential customers or viewers are for your website here's what they're going to be using kind of cool and then you can go to this other website called can i use Okay, do you guys remember when we were doing the, the meter? Remember that? I'm a, okay, so I'm going to type, come on, meter. And I go here and see that it's, it's supported in Edge and Firefox and Chrome and Safari. It's not on uh, Apple Safari. Um, and it's not on Internet Explorer. So can I use is going to tell you what feature is or is not supported by what version of browser that you have. That's a very cool thing to have. And now back to screen resolution, which is what we were talking about to begin with. I want to know what the uh, the screen resolution is. So, oh, come on. There we go. So it looks like the most popular screen resolution out there is uh, 1366 by 768, okay? Uh, I'm a little chicken, and so I pick uh, 1024 by 768. That's what I pick. Uh, it seems to be enough number. It's, it's not that much difference. And so that's basically the one that I use uh, to, to pick. Uh, it, clearly, it's not the most popular, but then again, remember Universal Design? I'm not trying to get the most popular. I'm trying to get everyone. So I'm looking at it from the, the point of view of how many people are, am I going to exclude if I pick 1024 by 768? And the answer is about 2 or 
which is not bad. That's not bad. It's not perfect, but it ain't bad. Okay. So, really, there's no clear winner on this. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. And so, most people just say, ah, oh, to heck with it. Let's just use 1,024 by 768. And so, in their mind, they translate that 1,024 into 960. That's how much usable space. And so, most people who do design web pages um, are probably going to be thinking 960. It may not be a good assumption, but it's pretty good. And and if you're off, okay, it's not devastating. Okay, it's not. You'll just get that horizontal scroll bar. You know, you can still see your web page, but you got to scroll across to be able to see it all. That's the only difference. So it's not, you know, horrible. It's just pick a number and stick with it. Okay. On page 224, they talk about navigational choices. So you really ought to have what's called a site-wide navigation structure. So here is my site-wide. Site-wide means no matter what page I go to, it stays. So this is a constant navigational structure. There are some choices you can do them across. If you, if I only had three or four of these guys, I probably would go, I would go, you know, horizontal. But I don't. I have a handful. They won't fit. So I went vertical instead. Your choice. But remember. Your nav structure should have stay on the screen at all times. I mean, clearly I can scroll past it. I mean, come on. I can scroll past it and it goes away. But when I scroll up to the top, I should be able to see everything. There's a way, by the way, that you can make that follow along with you so it never runs out of, out of view, but we're not going to be doing that. So some sort of common site-wide navigation. So same location, same style, same order, same content. Yes, could be horizontal, could be vertical. Uh, there's a thing called breadcrumb navigation. There's an example here, although it's not a very good one. Um, so this guy only has four things across the top, and it all fits, you know, you know, a horizontal one. Cool, go for it. And then underneath, breadcrumbs is just like Hansel and Gretel. They it tells you where you currently are. Now, admittedly, half of it's being obscured by this, which is why this is not a very good example. But it's basically telling you that, that I went to the home, I went to tours, and I clicked on something called half-day tours, and there may be something else after that. So breadcrumbs means show me where I am in this, this structure that you have. You have a, a huge navigational structure. Where am I? Where am I in the thing? And so this breadcrumb is the thing that will... And most people do it like this, like in a, it's almost like a crawl. They, they have it all the way, one line that goes all the way across showing where you are in there. So breadcrumb. Um, the breadcrumbs themselves are typically static. In other words, they're not hyperlinks. You, I have seen some that the breadcrumb itself are hyperlinks. And so I want to get back to tours. I could hit that button to get to tours, or I could just hit this and goes directly to it. Kind of cool. Uh, graphics. If you're going to be using graphics for uh, navigation, then you basically, not only do you need alternate text for your graphics, so screen readers can read it, you also need an entire alternate navigation structure someplace else, most likely in the footer. So, bottom line is, don't do that. Okay, just don't have graphics only. This may look to you like graphics. They're not. This is text using some really cool CSS tricks that we're going to learn in a couple more chapters where I set the a border and I, I, I make it uh, change and bold and all those things. These are not graphics. That's a graphic over here, but these are not. So bottom line is don't, okay? Using graphics alone uh, for nav is just a bad idea. Um, you need the ability to skip over stuff. For particularly one of those things where you go to a website and like there's an introductory video and you go, oh geez, please, can I skip and go directly to the content? So have a, a hyperlink that says skip intro. Yeah, thank God. Because some of these things I go to and I go, oh, I have to go through that again. I mean, just get me to the part that I want to go. So that's a, a good thing to add in a navigation structure. Okay, doggone it. We're up on the 15 minute mark again. Uh, we'll finish this off in just a few more minutes.